This is the final module in the course, module five, evaluation. Like I did say, looking at the ADI model, evaluation is the lab process in ADI model. After you have done your analysis, you have designed, you have developed, you have implemented, you now have to evaluate, to assess, to find out if what you said you want to attain, if you've been, been able to attain it. And the way you do that is usually in two forms. It's either you are using the formative or summative evaluation. Now, in the formative evaluation, it is used to check the student's process. The, sorry, the student progress. You use it to change the progress of the students in the class. And right there too, remember, you are writing for the students. They may see you, they may not, they may not see you, they clearly see you if you happen to be their facilitator. But majority definitely won't see you, except you are their facilitator. And whereby you are not the facilitator, they won't see you, they won't meet with you. And most times, what they need to do is to learn everything online. So in this regard, you see that you use formative evaluation to check their progress rates. And they will equally use it by themselves as self-evaluation. Because when they are attending to formative uh, evaluation or questions or devices that have been set for formative evaluation, definitely they will be able to know where they go wrong and how to amend. And that is why the tutor mark assignment is taken seriously. Because whereby the tutor mark assignment is an essay and is marked, you not just mark without putting comments. Where the student have got it right, you let it reflect, you put it there. And where the student did not get it right, it's not even too advisable to put that sign of bad. You say, what is this? You just crossed it. No, you could not come up. Oh, this is what you should have done. Do it this way, do it this way, do it. That's why it's a guide. So formative evaluation, let's have it in mind that we always use it as uh, to check learning progress. How far the learner has been able to progress. That is what you use it to check. And there are different methods, different techniques you can use when you are setting formative evaluation. But when you now come to summative evaluation, in summative evaluation, this is a whole. You want to check everything. Whereas in formative, you are checking bit by bit. As you go, you check. As you go, you check. You are not waiting till the end. Because waiting till the end before you check all could be sometimes dangerous. Because once the student do not get the basis that they need to get before proceeding, and the student has finished the course before you identify, there, there is already a minus. So in this case, you use formative to check progress as you go. Then summative is holistic. It comes up at the last thing. And there are different ways you can check for summative evaluation. It could be through examination, you can decide to give projects. You can decide to give just assignments and no exam and that form it. It could be practical. So these are some of the things that we need to know when we are carrying out summative. Now, let's quickly look at uh, differentiation between summative and formative from what I am putting down here. Right here, you will have I said, uh, formative. We'll have the top one. This down part is a summative. Then at the middle, you have teaching portfolio. You see, everything you have in the summative formative, they pull together to form your teaching portfolio. Sometimes, even only the portfolio, you may need from the student to assess the students. Just they get me your portfolio, and they also submit their portfolio. That is what you use as an assessment, which will be comprehensive. Because if you have given, let us assume, three assignments, you must find the three assignments. If they are not there, then... It means something has gone wrong somewhere. Now, you look at it closely, you discover there are different teaching techniques, different learning techniques that have been specified. Let's say formative, for example. If you look up it right there, I said teaching, what we are doing, learning, what the students are doing. Right here, let's pick the first one, the first bullet. Say periodic student survey. Now, to the right, we have exercises. It means the student need to do exercises. That is the learning activity now. The student need to do exercises 
to be able to meet with this periodic student survey. Now, let's go to the last one. I said review and consultation. In review and consultation, to the right, you have techniques. And what that simply implies that the student will be applying techniques to achieve that particular learning skill. And so we have at the down part. So with this, the last part we're not going to take in this course before we say bye has to do with the course review. You know, before now, we normally have uh, the lifespan of the course material to be five years. In National Open University of Nigeria, that is what we do before now. We will have print material. Now, there is a reason why it was support at that five years. Many other institutions do the same too. And to prepare a test material, it is not easy. To put your content into a test trial form, it's not easy. Before you go for the printing, you go for this, you go for that, you have a lot of protocol to pass through. And because that protocol was kind of affecting the learning system, they tried to look for a way to bypass it. But right now, you discover that if you are to review, working with an online, waiting for five years will not be good at all. Reason being that things are changing fast. And sometimes the links you may have used for your students may have changed. Sometimes they may have pulled it down that you cannot assess. So if you don't feel, oh, I have written, it was a good word. Oh, I was applauded when I wrote. I, you know, you don't want to go back again. Then there will be a problem. So from me, I would suggest that the review of online content material should be at every semester, before the beginning of every semester. Reason be that the level of review this time differs what you are checking at the beginning of every semester one to ensure that uh the links or the references that are made they are still up to date or whereby there is a new knowledge that the new knowledge is quickly embedded if not the material becomes obsolete so when you are to review your material most times you could be lucky if you are the same person that wrote it, but whereby you are not the same person that wrote it, it's a little bit stressful. So what do you need to do to get your material? That is what we need to look out for. So you must think ahead what the student needs to do to get the material back in a better shape, in a better form before you go into it. So what are you going to focus on when you are course reviewing? Look at the structure, look at the format, look at the language look at the content is very very paramount the content is very very paramount is the content still up to date because whereby the content is no more up to date there you have to go for a quick review don't wait any further go for a quick review then if the links are not open you have to look for substitute link that you can link up to or pull it down and write that part so with this i will say we've come to the end of this course. I wish you well as you read more in the course. Bye.